witches. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, so I'm sure you've noticed we've been doing some um, new and like different things with some of our episodes. Um, so we've been trying to do a witchy tips episode or a, what do we call it? Spellbinding Saturday. Yeah. Um, and then also we're going to start trying to do some episodes about either weird, mysterious, true crime or, um, the history of witches, which is kind of what this episode is going to be about. Um, it's not exactly about witches, it's good, but it's about Native American folklore, specifically the folklore of the Wampanoag tribe, um, which is one of the tribes that um, participated in, it's actually the primary tribe that participated in the first Thanksgiving. Um, so <laughs> the first Thanksgiving story that we're all taught is just a hot fucking mess like it was like a kumbaya fucking party where the native americans taught the pilgrims how to grow corn using fish and like all this hot mess of shit and somehow there's a turkey i don't know <laughs> there wasn't an actual turkey so we're clear there was not a turkey at the first thanksgiving um and it wasn't planned like there was there was no planned um event that happened what had happened was the pilgrims were celebrating their first harvest um like they were excited and they did send a messenger to the wapanoag tribe to like say thank you and invite them to come join but they were thinking like you know the chief and like maybe his family were gonna come but because of the um you know, communication barriers, language barriers. Um, the Wampanoag tribe thought they were being summoned to assist in a fight. So the chief and 90 warriors show up to this Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> and of course, they were invited to join the feast. Um, but they were expecting a lot less people. So there wasn't enough food. So the Wampanoag people went out and brought back five deer. So they had venison. Um, so this feast lasted three days, by the way. Do you celebrate Thanksgiving for three days? No. no. I don't like them people enough to see them for three days. <laughs> Reach. <laughs> Two, three hours max, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go home. <laughs> but this feast lasted for three days. Um, they ate venison, waterfowl, which is where people think that the turkey legend came from, like, because... <laughs> They said that there was fowl, but it was actually waterfowl. So it was probably more like, um, like seagulls and like cranes and that kind of birds. It was not, yeah, um, actually a turkey. Um, I, venison, I feel like turkey is very like Midwest. Like, yeah, like, I, are there even turkeys in what is it, Virginia? I don't even know. I think it's Virginia. I have no idea. Um, um, but yeah, so they, there were, there were no actual turkeys. There was a lot of seafood because, you know, they're right there on the coast and that's what easy they, right. That's what they eat. Cause that's what's available. And then pumpkins and squash and cornbread, which they called maize bread, but this cornbread, um, that the native Americans had taught them how to make. Don't judge me. <laughs> I just hear <laughs> listen there was no record of turkey being served but next week bet my happy ass is gonna get up early so i can put that turkey in so it has time to cook by the time we're eating lunch okay i'm also making a ham because i don't particularly like turkey and I, i'll eat turkey but it's a little dry and napkin-y for my tastes um so i'm gonna be making a ham as well but that's neither here nor there because we're not talking about my Thanksgiving. We're talking about the first Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, the reason why we have Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. So, um, and actually, like, yes, Thanksgiving is that Thursday. But then on that Friday, um, Native American people, like in present times, 
Native American people from around the country go to Coles Hill, which is the is a hill that's overlooking Plymouth Rock for the National Day of Mourning um, because they now, the Wapanoag people now regret their ancestors welcoming the pilgrims um, and helping them the way that they did because... <coughs> Damn. <coughs> oh my <Jesus>. goodness. <laughs> um, Get this bitch a tissue. <laughs> for real though. They regret um, helping them because obviously it kind of like ruined their lives. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just awful. Um, but yeah, that's the story of the first Thanksgiving. It wasn't actually planned. It wasn't this big like sit down feast like we all you know had to color the pictures of in elementary school where there was like the kumbaya picture of the picnic table with the pilgrims and the indians kumbaya, sitting together. Like, no, it's not actually how it was kumbaya. and there was seafood not turkey and potatoes that wasn't a thing can we just talk so, about like what what happened afterward after the first thanksgiving <laughs> and i think it's really funny because like america still fucking does this yes the white people brutalized the yes. native americans the day after and what do we do now we brutalize americans other americans and retail workers for black fucking friday yes yes and like <clears throat> it's just insane because it was essentially genocide like if we're being real, they basically hunted down all the Native Americans and just killed them. It was genocide. So yeah. maybe it wasn't like the Holocaust with like gas chambers and shit, but it was still death on a mass scale based on race, basically. I mean, it wasn't, it was more like. Yeah. And it was because they were savages. Right. Because they were less, white lesser human beings. Like. Yeah. And, um, Oh, what is it? The it was essentially like this. I mean, white people have always been this way. Well, okay, I shouldn't say white people. Civilization, because it hasn't always been white people. Civilization um, has always been around to brutalize each other for one reason or another, whether it be race or you know religion, but or money or yeah. yeah. Um, but this was probably the start of the like native americans getting pushed further and yeah. further inland away from what they've known all their ancestors have known yes and like it's just really crazy too because like i feel like we celebrate so many things like like thanksgiving like that are really yeah. based on just mass murder. Like, what? <laughs> it's just, yeah. Communism. Be thankful for your family and friends next day. Fucking kill each other for a PS5. <laughs> uh, right. Like, what? I don't, I don't know. Um, And, like, not to put, like, a lighter thing on that or anything. They're just, there's not a lot of information about it. So that's all I have about the first Thanksgiving. I'm sure that there is more information out there. Um, but what I was able to find on the internet, um, was not, was just that. Um, I'm sure the, like, <clears throat> because most, if not all Native Americans, like tribes have like a center, like a, mm -hmm. um, kind of like a capital, I would say, um, for their tribe. And I wonder if like they have like written works, kind of like how, like Christianity has like the Bible, like things passed down through the ages. Of... Well, I think that's part of it too. Cause a lot of the times and maybe not so much anymore in like this age of technology, but so often native Americans passed these things verbally. They didn't write it down, um, but they passed down their traditions and their stories out loud to each other. So I think that's part of it too. And I'm not going to lie to you, some of these in these next couple stories that I'm going to go over, I'm going to butcher some of these names. And I'm just going to apologize now 
I did look up pronunciations. Some of the pronunciation symbols, I didn't know what the fuck they meant. Like, I tried. <laughs> and I hope I'm not too far off. But I don't know what some of these pronunciation symbols meant. So, I'm going to do my best. Um, it's kind of like Gaelic. It's like you have, yeah. like, the letters there. But then some of those letters don't make that sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So some of these, like, are pronounced, well, actually, a lot of them are pronounced exactly the way they're spelled. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, this um, next story that I'm talking about is the, there's a couple tribes that have the same story. They just change the names of the different beings or spirits. Um, specifically the Wampanoag tribe. And this one I did not look up the pronunciation for, but I think it's the Janape tribe. They both follow the same thing. They just have different names for the spirits and the deities. Um, but their, this is their creation creationism story. Um, so their god or creator, for lack of a better term, um, the name is Ketanit. Katanit? Katanit. It's Katanit. I looked this up, I promise. <laughs> um, and their creator has no human form and no gender. So there is no... Is it just like an energy? It's just... Like spirit? Type it's thing? the great spirit. Mm. But there's no oh, like... okay. Okay. Human form. About. So it's just like a... Being? Something. I don't know. Um... But Katana is just, you know, floating around out there. There's nothing. Nothing exists. The universe doesn't exist. Nothing. Um, and they had a vision of the earth and everything that inhabited it. So they had a vision of the earth and the water and the oceans and the people and the animals and the wind and all of this. Um, and then when they began thinking about all of these things, they started kind of popping into being. Which is interesting, but that's how it happened in this story. And the first things that popped into being were the four, the four spirits. Um, they the called their spirits, <laughs> right? The four <laughs> spirits are grandmas and grandpas. Um, but huh? the first one, yeah, they call them their grandma, like grandma. Like the, the, these spirits, or like. The spirits, yeah. They call these spirits oh, okay. like Grandfather Rock, Grandmother... Oh, like Grandmother Fire. Willow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but the way as a they child... Say... I didn't get that. No. <laughs> Thank you for confirming this. Yes. So I was the way so that... concerned. <laughs> you just thought her was grandma like, was a tree. Grandma was a tree. Yes, I did. <laughs> grandmother Willow as a child, grandmother. Yeah. Grandmother. So they call their Thank spirits for... grandmother and grandfather. Um, it which is it's, it's actually really <laughs> interesting. It took me a minute to realize what I was reading because part of it was in another language and part of it was it like and then it was in English afterwards. So mm -hmm. the first spirit is Maxumsa Lewenawink. Maxumsa means grandfather. Lewenawink is his name. Um, and this is the spirit of rock. And the north. All of these spirits are also directions on the compass. Oh. Um, so this spirit created physical form. So he created the earth and he created the mountains and the rivers and the oceans and all of that. Or not the oceans and the rivers, not the water. He just did the physical like dirt and rocks and formations and the stars and all that. Um, he's also their spirit of the winter. So he also created ice and snow and our physical bodies, like, and all of the animals' physical bodies. Anything physical, he's got you. Mm -hmm. okay. um, then the next one is, so that was Loenawank. This is Maxumsa Wapainawank. Wapainawank. Wapainawank, okay. Yes. <laughs> and this is the spirit of the wind or the east, whichever you want to call him. So he's the spirit of, like, breath, wind, obviously, um, 
and the mind. So he put all of our thoughts in our heads and gave us our personalities. Um, he's also the spirit of spring, new birth or new beginnings and birth. And he also created creativity, knowledge, and music. So this is my guy. He's my guy. Okay. The next spirit, the fuck is on my shirt. Sorry, guys. Dinner. Just found something. So yeah, some kind of crusty shit on my shirt. Anyway, um, <laughs> the next spirit is the only grandmother of the spirits, and grandmother is said Huma. So this is Huma Shawainawank. I don't know why everybody's Wayne Wank. I don't. I don't know. Might not, might not. That's, do, 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 do. that's what it reminded me of. <laughs> oh my gosh. The Muppets. I, I, that just made me think of a previous mutual student that we had that yeah. loved that song. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, anyway. Oh, cute boy. Oh, he's so oh. sweet. I know. I really need to text his dad and figure out where he's at these days. But anyway, focus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Huma Shuenawank. She is the grandmother spirit of South and Fire. I love that the only grandmother spirit is the spirit of fire. I don't know why, but I love that. Um, so she is the spirit of spirit. <laughs> she <laughs> created like your soul, basically. Um, and life and growth. So she gave everything life. Um, she's also the spirit of summer, warmth, and maturity. And she gives fire to the sun. So if we didn't have her, we wouldn't exist. We would all be That's dead. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. Frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the last of the four spirits is Mixumsa Wunchenawink. Um, he is the grandfather spirit of water and the West. He's the spirit of autumn, death, renewal, Hades vibes here is what you're getting. Yeah. Hades vibes like death, renewal, um, life's blood, healing, intuition, emotions, dreams, visions, and rains. So he's kind of the misunderstood creepy spirit. Yeah, I can see that. Now, vibes, definitely. So they're very like about balance, which I feel like a lot of religions are. Um, <laughs> so everything had balance. If there was dark, there had to be light. If there was male, there had to be female, hot, cold, yada, 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 yada. So in having the good creator of Ketanet, who brought life to everything and in the universe there had to be the um opposite of that which is matantu which is the spirit of destruction um and basically he's the opposite of ketanet so where ketanet brings life and creates um life matantu is all about destroying that it's kind of yeah, yeah, kind of the god and thing. devil yeah like it's not really it's like they're opposite so everything that this one wants, this one wants the opposite of that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and so the earth and life were created. So like earth and animals, plants, all of that. And then the humans came last and it's, it got a little weird at the end. So I didn't write it all down. Um, but basically they, they were created last or we were created last out of all of this and given life by these four spirits. Um, but then this next story is kind of like, it's more of a folk tale. That was the end of the creationism story. Now we're here. We live. All of that is great. Um, this next story is more of like a, um, a fable. That's what the one is. That, that's the one that has like a lesson, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So... This story is about the giant mashup. It's also their version of the circle of life. Oh, okay. Yeah. So 
Um, the circle of life. Uh, stop it before Disney comes and gets us. <laughs> You're not on the rights for this song. <laughs> Please, there's oh some low-time podcasters. <laughs> we ain't making oh money gosh. off this. They can't. We can't. They can't give. Oh, us that's true. Monetizing it. That's true. Oh my I'll gosh. show you my anyway. tax records. I'll show you. I ain't getting paid for this. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, my the giant mashup <laughs> is like a hero oh, okay. in their folklore. He truly is a giant. He's like huge. Like he lived Did on the he island. Create Niagara Falls. No, no. Oh, okay. He lived on Cape Cod. Oh, that that island is where he lived. That's an island, right? Yeah, that's an island. Yeah. Um, so he is this big dude, right? And. But he looks just like a regular Native American. Like, he looks just like the rest of the Wampanoag people. He's just huge. Um, so he's so big that one time he took off his shoes and emptied the sand out of his shoes and created the islands of Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. I don't know what they were called then, but now that Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. Like, he dumped the sand out of his shoes and created these two islands. Um... So what happened was he befriended the Wampanoag tribe and started helping them do things because like for them to carry wood for their fires from the forest to their camp took forever, but it just takes him like two minutes. Right. Um, and when they were hungry and struggling to find like game or food, he would drive whales onto the beach so they could, harvest the meat from the whale and not go hungry um you would drive big, them like a cattle like a dog cattle yeah. would do or okay yeah yeah um and this made the wampanoag people lazy so katanit their like creator spoke to mashup and told him that the people would never grow if they didn't have to care for themselves and their circle of life would not be strong <laughs> So, um, um, Mashup, Katanit turned Mashup into a whale, a giant blue whale, um, and put him in the ocean and he went away from the people, even though he was sad to leave his friends because they were his friends. Um, and the people learned to survive on their own again and they created the medicine circle of life out of smooth stones from the ocean's low tide, which they still do this. Like people, um, this was the birth of like a clam bake, basically. Oh, this is like cool. the origin of that. So they would take the, the smooth stones from the ocean um, and make like a circle out of them, like a fire pit, basically. Um, and then they would use branches and other fuel for a fire, but they would only take what was already dead. So, like, they wouldn't cut down trees for this fire. They would just find dead branches and stuff on the ground. Um, and then they would put, so they would make the fire so the rocks were really, really hot. And then they would put seaweed from the low tide again, because it's low tide, on the rocks to make the steam. And then all the clams and stuff are in the middle to get the steam from the, so like the fire's gone now, it's just steaming um, from the seaweed. And that's how they cook the seafood. So like it, cool. it's the circle of life because now he's like seafood basically. I mean, they're not eating mosh up, but like, anyway, this is what it's they like do. Christian and like version of I am the blood and wine or I'm yeah, the blood basically. And bread, wine and bread. That's it. Yeah. Basically. And, like, so that's their, like, circle of life story. And, like, they still today, like, will cook seafood this way on certain important days. Um, I didn't say, like, what the names, like, if they were actually holidays for them or it didn't Just say that. Moments. But, yeah, like, on important events. Um, 
So I told you this was going to be a short one. I have two more people to talk about and one of them <laughs> links to Harry Potter and it makes me so happy. But anyway, <laughs> of course um, it does. <laughs> so they have two little, two groups of like little people um, that are like spirits, like four spirits. The first ones are the Nicomo. They're, they're benevolent, helpful. They do things to help the Wampanoag tribe. They do things um, to make things better. They'll leave them little surprises, all of this. These are the, the good ones. But then the balance for that, you know, everything's got balance, is the Pukwudgie. <gasps> I'm a Pukwudgie, right? So the Pukwudgie <gasps> is capricious and dangerous little goblin people who play pranks or sometimes more seriously assault people. <laughs> You know, you know, it's so sad. <laughs> Will's going to listen to this episode and he's going to come out and that's going to be my new fucking nickname because <laughs> today, today I walk up to him and I, I don't or something. I don't know. I did something and he goes, why are you such a nuisance? Like, <laughs> I just do shit all the time that <laughs> I was See, like, them storming quizzes are real. They really are. Yeah, I'm totally a puck wedgie. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I saw I, it. I'm the little goblin come true. <laughs> oh my god! Speaking of funny partner stories, since we have time, this is so I've been jumpy today because, first of all, in my career, I am constantly being touched all the time. Someone is touching me, and I just have been kind of touchy today and a little bit in mood and anyway this morning so Brittany is notoriously quiet like yeah. she will just walk through the house like a fucking cat and she'll be right behind you and you don't even fucking hear her coming I swear all the time <laughs> I do that shit to Will her. all the time and he's like where the fuck did you come from <laughs> oh my god and like she doesn't even perp sometimes she purposefully scares me but like she's not usually doing it on purpose so like for example this morning I always listen to I I've been really on an audiobook kick lately. So I was listening to my audiobook while I was in the shower. And I finished my audiobook yesterday. I listened to Moonlight Murders, which is the Magpie Murders and Moonlight Murders are really, really good series if you like whodunits. Anyway, I digress. Now I'm listening to a new audiobook and she came in there to ask me what it was. Let me just plug this real quick because it's really cute so far. If you like Hallmark movies and like feel good stories, um, that's what I was looking for in my next audiobook, and it was a Christmas one. It's called In the Event of Love. And it's about an event planner who goes home to her hometown and meets her ex-girlfriend, and like there's gay shit, and I love it. Anyway, that's not the point of the story. Brittany came in there to ask me what I was listening to because she knew I finished my old audiobook and wanted to know what new one I was listening to. She comes in there. I'm in the shower and like scrubbing my hair and stuff, and all of a sudden she talks and she's like right behind me with the shower curtain partway open. So I literally like throw my elbow up, almost elbow her in the face. And it was just a hot mess because she scared me to death. And I was like, I need you to announce yourself. Like what the fuck? So fast forward to the end of the day, I come home and she was in a meeting in her office cause she works from home part of the time. And anyway, she was working from home when she was in a meeting. So I just shut her office door and went in the kitchen and started doing dishes and getting stuff ready to cook dinner. And then she apparently tiptoed down the fucking hallway out in like opened her office without the door squeaking. I don't know. Anyway, she comes in the kitchen and she goes, I'm announcing myself. I swear to fucking God, I about jumped out of my fucking skin. I about threw a spoon at her. And she was like, that's what you told me to do. And I was like, I know, but I thought you were still in your office. I didn't hear you no, come you gotta and walk heavier or some shit. Yeah, you have, like that like, fucking parrot in the video, walk with smack <laughs> your little feet while you're walking. Anyway, yes. and then I knew she was in the kitchen now at this point, right? She's like, are you dying at the parrot video? Because I fucking love yeah. that video. There's a oh bird at work that does that. He just, oh my he God, gets mad, I need But he it. doesn't stomp anywhere. He just sits on his shoulder and he just. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I made it. Brittany He's said so I can't cute. have a bird. We can't have Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, <laughs> come on. Well, gets, this story gets even better because after okay. all this, right, she's like announced herself. I know she's in the kitchen. 
or in the lip she was in the living room but i was in the kitchen but they're connected if you haven't for those of you who haven't room. been to my house it's like one big room all together anyway she was petting the cat in the living room and then all of a sudden she comes up behind me i don't hear her coming across the kitchen and she like grabs this my sides to give me a hug <laughs> and i like jumped out of my fucking skin again and like i knew she was in the room just swing know. your arm behind you <laughs> jesus i just oh fuck <laughs> I know, like, ugh. That's funny. She scares me all the time. I also need you to know that I clearly do not, like, I don't know. My notes over these subjects versus my notes about the books always, like, it takes so much longer to talk about the book than it does. Maybe it's because you have notes, too. I don't know. I had four yeah. pages of notes about this story, and it only took a half hour. Look at that. I need so more funny though. Time, it really is. Right. I feel like a little goblin half the time. <laughs> I freaking love it though. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, you were sitting there and I was like, huh, they leave you little gifts. Oh, that's a fairy. I leave little little gifts sometimes. And then you're like, nah, the other one's a puck wedgie, and this is what he is. I was like, oh, never mind. There, <laughs> <I am. laughs> there I go. Gifts are of terror. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But you fucking nuisance. <laughs> Bitch, I'm the best damn nuisance you'll ever get. <laughs> I'm the greatest good you're ever going to get. Yes. I'll sit there and I will be like, oh, what is it? Um, uh, fuck. I will, I will sit there and just like, I don't know, maybe like, for instance, I get like really bad anxiety over something. I'll sit there and consistently worry and worry and worry or like just continually bring it up after we've talked about it so much. And then he'll be like, you're going to give me cancer one day. Like, I swear to God, you're going to, I already have cancer. I am dying actively from cancer because you're giving it to me. <laughs> and it's, it's always like the dogs are always going to give him cancer because like they're killing him slowly. And it's just like his way of saying he's dying slowly because of them. But now it's, it, it now it's me. Lily has yet to be like the cause of any problems whatsoever. It's me or the dogs. Like we're we're the cause of cancer for him, and it depends on the day. Nine times oh out of gosh. ten, I'm a, I'm the nuisance. Then you have Scarlet, who's the next nuisance. Then you got Polly, who's a nuisance only at bedtime though. And then Lily, who is the darling little fairy princess that she is, and then doesn't you know? Listen, one of the one of the beings in this house is going to be the end of me as well because Brittany scares me all the time. She's going to give me a fucking heart attack one of these times. The cats, I trip over constantly. And, like, <laughs> Karma used to lay on my face. Like, when we had Karma, she would lay on my fucking face in the middle of the night knowing I was allergic to her. I swear to God that bitch was trying to suffocate me. <laughs> I swear to God. She would literally lay, like, on my chest. And, like, I think it's because I have, like, mild apnea. And sometimes, like, I think she would be like, wake up. Wake up. You're not moving. Wake up. Like, <laughs> but... Um I'm allergic to her, so her laying on my face made it worse. Oh my gosh, that's so. And then funny. the two stupid ones we have now, I just trip over all the time. <laughs> and then you you can't really see it anymore, but chaos. I was holding chaos the other day. He like is a baby, chaos. Like a little yes, he is like a little sweet baby on his back, which usually he's completely fine with. Like usually he's fine with being carried around like yeah. that. Something spooked him that day. He ripped my fucking shirt and he put three like claw marks right here. And then I have a claw mark. You can't really see it very well. But no, yeah, there you go. See it? Oh, there. Yeah. Ooh, ow. Yeah, I have two claw marks Damn. there. And I had three here. These ones are healing a lot quicker. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, and he ripped my fucking shirt. I was like, are you kidding me? I may or may oh, not have fucker. had a small mini mental breakdown that night because it was my Rose Apothecary rainbow shirt. And I was very upset. But I found another one on Poshmark, so everything is fine now. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, all of my shirts have, like, it's it literally one little hole around the stomach area. And it's always, like, where... From, like, your jean buttons? Yeah. yeah. And I'm, like, every fucking shirt I own, there, it's right there. I was, like, all right. I used to have that up. a lot. I don't wear jeans now. anymore. But speaking of pants, look at my pants. They're Christmas. Ew. 
<laughs> the thing you shared to Facebook, it's like, mm, I am definitely not Buddy the Elf. I am the So It Begins. But I also work Listen. in retail. And I I work eight hours a day listening to fucking Christmas music, staring at Christmas things. And I'm just like, this is... <laughs> I was working Listen. the other night. And someone's like, Emily, what's your location? And I was like, I'm in the cir- third circle of hell. Like, that is exactly where I am at. And they're like, what? And I was like, I'm in this dog food aisle facing. And they're like, but you're in the third circle of hell? Yes. I have been here for damn near eight hours. And all I have heard has been fucking Christmas music on blast. The moments where it's like a nice calming tune, no sounds, no like... No typical jingle bells, jingle bells, like bullshit. None of that. It's literally just music. I, sometimes I feel like I'm either walking in Epcot, like it's like theme kind of music that you would hear. Or like um, it's not waiting room music. It's not like uh, like you're in an elevator or like on the phone waiting. It's literally I'm at a nice sit down restaurant like listening to like a symphony. Classical like, music. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not like a it's not Christmas theme. And I'm like, you know, I will take this any day, all day. Like I got this. This is great. Like it's themed. I can sit here and imagine I'm like on a bow in a five-star restaurant, like eating my heart's content, drinking wine, not this stupid ass bullshit. Mariah Carey. All I want for Christmas is you. No. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know. I'm, I don't, hours I, a week. <laughs> I hate the movie elf. I, hate that movie partially because unpopular opinion i fucking hate will ferrell he just sucks <laughs> i i he's not funny he i don't know i just don't like him um and like i don't the only movie is he's in is he in grown-ups no no yep. there's like no that's adam yeah yeah anyway there's like uh, two movies know. two movies that he's ever been in that i like one of those is daddy's home <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, but there's, like, two Step movies Brothers. that he's ever been in that I like. I don't like that movie. <laughs> I don't like Talladega Nights. I don't like I, – no, I just don't like him. And then The Office, once he got on The Office, that show was just total shit. It was awkward enough with Michael Scott, and then you brought him into the picture, and I just stopped watching it. Like, I can't even. Yeah, I mean, I finished The Office, and I really, really liked it, but his character was just, like, this weird – Thing. And then just fucking like died, and then he's yeah, just gone I, forever, and no one mentioned him ever again. I thought that was just kind of weird. It, uh, I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't even finish watching it, so I never got to that point because I can't stand him. He was not in Grown Ups, but I really do enjoy him in um, or enjoyed him. I liked him in the a Night at the Roxbury. <laughs> he's just so fucking stupid, <laughs> but it's so funny. Um, but yeah, I was like, I. I I hate that movie, yeah. but I'm definitely the Buddy the Elf type. Yeah, no. Everybody's like, like I would, it's Christmas. And I'm like, no. I would have no, already put up decorations if Brittany would let me, but she said I have to wait till after Thanksgiving, which means that next weekend I'm going to be putting up decorations. <laughs> I've thought about putting decorations up just because I wanted to get like a good, you know, I want to do it. I barely had time to get my Halloween decorations up, and then I I just didn't get it. But I and I was trying not to be like that typical like I'm gonna celebrate Christmas Christian way. Like I want to try it a different way. I want to try it a way that I feel more comfortable with. And then I realized every single thing about Christmas that I have ever been doing in my life has literally been a pagan like yeah. Thing. So I was like, oh, cool. So I'll just do it the way I was doing it exactly. and be done with it. So yeah. that's what I do win. That's, that's all, all. None of our decorations are along with the Christian version of Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all like. We have a lot of buffalo plaid, <laughs> um, and we have like a lot of snow scenes. Um, I guess not a lot of buffalo plaid. We just have a little bit of buffalo plaid. Um, we have some evergreen stuff, um, but that is a pagan thing. Um, yeah, we don't have religious 
stuff. He's yeah. not Christian. Stuff. I think I think it just really made me mad. And I feel so bad for my coworker because like he got me in a mood and we both went to lunch at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't even know what we were talking. Oh, I think we were talking about how um, about working in retail. And I was like, I watched this TikTok the other day about like somebody working. It's like she used to be a barista at Starbucks and it was Thanksgiving Day and she's working and the customer comes in in a shitty mood. And <clears throat> um. Like, it was like, well, you should be happy. It's Thanksgiving. Like, you should be thankful. And she goes, I would be more thankful if I wasn't working right now. Like, it's it's Thanksgiving. Why why are you here? I'm here because you're here. And right. I was like, man, I feel that. So I was telling him about that. And I was like, I think I'm just so... And he goes, man, you really don't like Christmas. And I was like, no. And I think it's because I grew up in a very, very, like... I wouldn't say very Christian, like, household. Because, like, my parents didn't go to church, like... We didn't do anything religious based other than like celebrate the holidays, but it's like, I literally had to go up to my grandmother's house when I got old enough and hide fucking eggs out in the yard until the little ones, the Easter bunny came. What? How is that Christian? That is not Christian. <laughs> and it pissed me off because everyone's That's like, That's actually oh, a pagan tradition too. <laughs> yeah, and everyone's like, oh, we're celebrating Jesus' rebirth, and he rose from the dead, his awakening. And I'm like, then call it that. Why are we celebrating Easter? Why do you call it Easter? I don't give a shit. I don't care. Actually a pagan tradition. Right? And, and I, the I pagan was tradition like, is called something similar to Easter. Like, the pagan holiday is... what? It's like May Maybon? No. No. I don't know, but I just get so pissed off that they're like telling me to go do this, this, and that, but we're supposed to be celebrating Jesus. And I'm like, y'all realize Astara. that you a star. That's it. A star. And it's like it's it's like, do you realize that you're pissed off at people for being pagan or for believing pagan ways, as you like to call it? But you're doing exactly what they're doing. They're not celebrating Jesus, they're celebrating Esther literally a fertility goddess the eggs and the bunny no fucking child ever wondered why do bunnies lay eggs they lay bunnies they laid themselves in a right they nest. have live births they're literally like, fucking mammals as a child <laughs> like, i was like why are I, I i literally went to catholic school and i would ask my catholic teachers the priest the sister that was the principal i was like why does easter have anything to do with eggs in a bunny and they're like it's jesus's rebirth that doesn't answer my question yeah, what the fuck Mary. does that mean <laughs> it doesn't have shit to do with bunnies or eggs father frank <laughs> what's your answer jesus has been reborn he died for our sins goody two shoes i don't give a fuck what, what the fuck does that have to do with eggs eggs in a bunny? <laughs> I was I was that child like I swear to God people questioning knew. everything they were like this bitch is gonna be the bane of our existence and I just, and literally like <sighs> the it made no oh sense. my god and the I arrival so of spring mad. is celebrated as the maiden goddess awakens from her long sleep of dreams like do you not realize the similarities that your Bible has to pagan traditions like and paganism has been along around a around long way yes, long time. And it's just so frustrating because it's like you all want to answer the same question, but you never actually want to tell me like what I'm asking. Like you never you like gaslight me and just think and that's like the end all be all question. And then when I sit here and tell you the fucking truth, then you get all pissed off at me and tell me that I'm fucking being uh, uh, um, uh, what is it? The, uh, the child of Satan. And it's like. <laughs> I'm just asking and you didn't answer. So you, what would I as a naturally curious person who is consistently fucking Googling things to know things like you tell me to go look it up, bitch. I did. Now you mad at me. I'm just okay. So I'm looking in this book, which talks about the different things. So in Astara, one of the most prominent symbols of the vernal equinox is the egg. This represents the cyclical birth of 
rebirth of nature. It's frequently equated with the sun god, um, as suggested by the rich golden hue of the yolk. The egg is also considered a symbol of creation. Some Genesis myths claim that the universe was created when a divine serpent wrapped itself around and cracked the cosmic egg. Like, the egg is literally... It's literally a pagan tradition. And the last of the winter stores were consumed as part of the spring celebrations. Like, they would finish up what they stored up for the winter, the food they stored up for the winter, um, because part of their spring celebration these pagan people was to hunt for bird nests and take the colored eggs out of their nests. Cause you know, like robins and shit, their eggs are blue and shit. Um, so they could eat them. That is a pagan tradition. I don't, can I, can I say it a little louder? It's a pagan tradition. I just, oh my God. I don't God. know where the I fucking just... bunny came from. Oh, nope. Here it is. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> Ostara. <laughs> the the um the counterpart to Esther um is <laughs> she is um she has a symbolic affinity with rabbits and they they factor into several of her myths. So well, let me say it and let me tell you. Also, they all they often um sacrificed rabbits to Esther. So let me tell you, you your whole fucking holiday. <laughs> Is pagan. <laughs> the whole I fucking thing. Get, I just get so mad. <laughs> I'm still not celebrating Easter just because of how pissed off I get. But we don't <laughs> celebrate Easter either. I mean, it, at the most, we would go to like watch the little kids do the eggs, but even, we don't even do that usually. Yeah, all the kids are old, like too old, and the kids or the people with the younger kids, like we don't even get Bro, together. We have but, twelve nieces and nephews. No, fuck that. This year, we were looking at, like, Christmas and shopping and stuff. Twelve nieces and nephews. Y'all need to stop procreating. I don't got the money for this. <laughs> All your bitches ain't getting kid gifts. <laughs> uh, mm. I am not the rich auntie. I am the broke, mentally challenged, at times, <laughs> auntie. And you oh best God. believe your bottom dollar. I ain't getting your kids shit. <laughs> <laughs> We are the I had spoil a aunties. We we get all the kids and spoil them. So it is rough I'll spoil when you with love. Of them. <laughs> but let me tell you, that cash flow ain't there. So that ain't happening. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. We started shopping uh, last month. <laughs> no. I went to Ulta today and I found something that I think like one of my friends would like. And I was like, cool. <laughs> okay. Well, now I got like four other. Like, who else am I going to do? And I was like, <laughs> Uh, this person would like this. This person would like that. And I'm just like, I don't have the fucking money for this. <laughs> so if y'all don't get a Christmas gift, your girl's broke. Sorry about you. Except for Brandy, you get one. Yay. But I also was getting essentially the same thing. So like. <laughs> I literally have a package over there that's got like books and shit that I've been meaning to send to you forever. It's got your address on it and everything. I just need to take it to the post office. But then I also may or may not have ordered you something as well. So, And do you also have to send that or is that just coming to me? <laughs> um, I'm also going to have to send it because I ordered stuff for me in the same order. Yep, there it is. <laughs> so. I'm hoping to send it to you by the end of the week. We'll see. And then if I don't send it to you by the end of the week, I literally, <laughs> the problem with me and gifts is that as soon as I buy them, I have to tell you what I got you. Oh, like, my I God. Been, fucking die like i don't care it's a gift or not like i i get so excited when i buy gifts for other people yes. i just want to tell them what it is and it's like i got you this i, I think you're gonna love oh it my so God. much Brittany's like, gonna be I cracking can't. up because that is another thing we have in common i'm so bad at that like i literally bought some things for her for christmas already and i am struggling to keep them hidden and not just give them to her well you know what i'm don't do it don't do it <laughs> I'm do it. It. <laughs> Bitch, I buy you a book. <laughs> I figured it was a book. It's always and a book. I got the author's signature in it, or I'm hoping to get the author's signature in it. Oh my gosh, that's cool. I'm going to a book signing this week. That's and exciting. I'm hoping we'll get the books. I I actually I'm not going. 
I have to work. Will's going for me and you. Oh yeah, because he was gonna take our business cards, right? Yeah, that's the that's the signing we're gonna get. So yeah, I bought you a TikTok out there, <laughs> and hopefully she'll sign the books. Oh well, now I can probably figure out what the book is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I got you some new bookmarks because it fits our vibes and I love it. <laughs> Brittany is going to be dying when she listens to this. <laughs> okay. But I'm so excited to tell you about the bookmarks. Okay. So one of the bookmarks is literally like a, it's like a metal, it's a metal bookmark and it's like a, it's a cat and you curl it around the corner of the, like a page and it looks like, the, oh. like it's like a cat sleeping within like the book. I have and one then I got that. You it's not a cat though. And then I got you like a metal, uh, like crescent moon, like Ooh. bookmark. But you read like seven so books hard at a time. I really do. I, I'm, I'm. So you can have a book bookmark for every single right fucking now. book. And I'm about <laughs> to start reading. Book. <laughs> yeah, I have an audio book going. I'm about to start reading the Court of Silver Flames. Then the Christmas Witch. I have to read. Which, by the way, plug. We are going to read the Christmas Witch by. Oh shit! I should have looked up how to pronounce it. I'm guessing it's Dahlia. Faulkner, so sorry if I'm pronouncing your name horribly incorrect. I will get it right before you come on the podcast. But she's going to come on the podcast. Woo-hoo-hoo! Yeah. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm so yes. nervous, but I'm so excited. But yeah, uh, that episode will be September or September. Oh, December September. <laughs> yes. December so 18. keep a lookout for that. No, we'll be posting 17. more information. 17. What? Not Which one is Saturday? Yeah. What is Emily? Saturday the 17th? Sorry. Get your life together. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Thanks for listening. <laughs> and, and we hope you have a great time. And see you later. Till next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>